Thank you. Um, yeah, so I, I I'll be talking a little bit about this thing called Create React App today. Uh, so Create React App is this thing, uh, I don't know if any one of you knows it, but it's this thing that was created a while back, so last year, uh, by Dan Abramov. So he's like one of the cool guys at, at Facebook. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll get into like what it really does. Uh, but basically our journey with it, so how, how it's kind of uh, inspired us to build a, a low configuration dev environment. Um, yeah, so first of all, what is actually configuration? So uh, how, can we, how can we define configuration? So let's, to, to try to define that, let's, let's take a look at an example. So um, we can say webpack configuration. So a lot of people talk about webpack configuration in, in, the, in the community. Um, and if you've ever used it, it kind of looks like that. Um, so it's, it's got some, some different loaders there, it's got some plugins, and it, it does some stuff. So can we define like what, what is the stuff that it's doing? And what, what is this? Um, so what, what is Webpack, first of all? So Webpack is, is this tool, it, it bundles code. So it's a, it's a code bundler. And um, what, what is it doing? What is the thing that it's actually doing? It's basically, it's, apply, it's getting, um, getting this generic tool to be applied to uh, some, some kind of specific um, application. So um, in this case, we can say configuration is adapting a code bundler to a specific application. So you're, you're using Webpack to bundle a specific application. So um, can, we, can we make it more generic though? I mean like, uh, this, is, this is very specific for the case of Webpack. Can we, can we describe configuration in a better way? Um, so a bundler is kind of like, uh, it is, is kind of like something generic, right? It, it is, it's a tool that a lot of different people use and it is, it is used for a specific application here. Specific application, what is that? So a specific ap application is for a specific person or group of people. So what are these? They're, they're multiple different use cases. So we can say configuration is settings to adapt something generic. So some generic tool or something generic to multiple different use cases. So we'll come back to this definition uh, later. So basically, this is great, right? I mean, everyone, everyone gets what they want and everyone's happy, right? Everyone has their own specific special snowflake configuration. They, they have all of the different Webpack configuration that they need and, and everyone's happy, right? Right? Um, so to answer this question, let's let's take a look at a couple of different industry phenomena. Um, so industry phenomena number one, um, JavaScript fatigue. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. There, it was uh, this blog post last year uh, about um, this idea that um, every every project. Uh, required decisions to be made. And so th that was this Eric Clemens guy that said this. This was the guy that first wrote the blog post about this. And he said, okay, I'm starting all these new projects. H how do I like, how do I bring my Webpack configuration along? How do, I, how do I know what to configure? And it's like so much, so much different kind of uh, ideas of, of configuration. I have to keep this all in my head. And so configuration in this case, it, it represents author decisions. So it re represents decisions that the people that write this web stuff, the, the, these things, maybe, yeah, you guys, really. Um, these, these things are decisions that you have to make with every new project. So a second industry phenomenon, uh, maintainer burnout. So this is, um, this is like a pretty prominent, there have been a, some pretty prominent examples in the community lately of people just being like, yeah, I'm off Twitter, I'm off GitHub, I'm done with this shit. Because I am, like, this is just too much. They, they come in in the morning and they see like 10 different issues about the specific configuration requirements of some, some specific person that wrote like five words, this doesn't work. Um, and then they have to go in, they have to debug everything, and this is multiplied by the number of different uh, options that a, a tool has. So Webpack is a particularly complex example of this. Um, that one, of my, one of my friends, he says that, like, he, he's uh, Johannes, so he's one of the maintainers of, of Webpack, and he he's, like, goes through the, this stuff all the time, and he has to, like, try to figure out what did the person really mean by this? What, what is this? And... Um, 
So Dan Abramov, so the guy that create, created Create React App, of course he's going to say these kinds of things. He says that configuration is a, a perfect example of, um, of tragedy of the commons. So tragedy of the commons, for those of you who don't uh, know it yet, it's the, it describes a situation where um, there is some common resource. So um, an, ex uh, a, an example of it outside of the in engineering industry is like, overfishing. So fish are the resource. Everyone shares the fish in the ocean. And there are, there are different people that, so different uh, fishing, um, fishing companies, and they, they want to take as much as they possibly can. And uh, they, by doing so, so if they take too much in the future, then there's going to be no fish left and it's going to be bad for everybody, right? So in this case, how this applies to configuration is uh, maintainer effort. So the, the effort that maintainers have to go through to, um, to keep a tool up to date with all of the different configurations that are possible. So if, you, if, if everybody wants their own little configuration option in there, everyone's striving to get Johannes, my friend, to, to go and create their own special little configuration option, nobody's going to get their options in because he's not going to have any time and he's going to burn out, right? So in this case, Configuration represents maintainer effort. So it, it represents main, uh, the effort of the people who actually work on this stuff behind the scenes or sometimes very publicly. So that comes in the form of issues with configuration. So these are like GitHub issues and the maintain, maintenance of uh, every one of those configurations. The third industry, um, industry phenomenon is the high mental load that, uh, that comes as a result of configuration in Teams. So if you, have, um, if you have different Webpack configurations across different projects, or even one Webpack configuration in one project, this is something that everybody in the team needs to know about, and they need to know like, what each option does and how that is going to impact them in their daily life. If they don't know how it works and it breaks, then they have to kind of they have to have an idea of how to look for it or how to, how to fix it somehow. So, like I often run into this problem. Okay, I, I where did I put this last Webpack configuration option that I put? And you're like, okay, this is impossible to find. So in this case, configuration represents team responsibility. It represents the responsibility and the mental effort of everybody in the team. It, it, like it's a distributed problem. <clears throat> So what's what's the answer? Like do I do I have an answer? Is this all just doom and gloom? Are we are we destined to just stop being developers and just I don't know go fishing or something? So how can we reduce the problems caused by modern build configuration? So let's go back to what I defined as configuration. So this was the definition that that I came up with. So settings to adapt something generic to multiple different use cases. So can we avoid like any of this? Can we, can we somehow reduce this? Can we avoid, for instance, the multiple use cases? Can we, can we say, um, yeah, I don't know, I'm not going gonna, gonna to stop doing new projects. I'll, I'll just do this one project and I'm, I'm done. Well, this is probably not an option for most of you guys because usually business comes along and it's like, hey, we need, we need a new project. So you got to set up a new project. So we can't really do that. But maybe can we standardize the settings in our tools somehow? So can we either through uh, through some kind of nice defaults, or can we can we somehow make it so that our tools have less configuration? Can we can we make can we reduce this somehow? So this brings us to industry phenomenon number four: the rise of zero of zero configuration tooling. So these are um, different projects that have come out recently that have um, been really popular and they have um, they have contributed to this kind of trend that is happening right now so for for zero or low configuration tooling so one one of those is this uh, this thing called prettier maybe some of you guys have heard about it it's it's just a formatter so it's it's probably the same it's the same or similar um, as es lint fix so if you guys have ever tried es lint fix it basically goes through your code and and fixes a whole bunch of different things es lint has a ton of different configurations options and uh, what JJ Longster so this uh, this Jason long guy said is unlike ESLint there aren't a million 
configuration options to it. So if you if you look at the the previous slide, like these these are the options up above. So it's it's got like some some uh, the amount the max amount of the width, the tab width, single quotes, trailing commas, but that's it. And they're even thinking of like yeah maybe that's too much, maybe that's too too many options. Um, the second thing is create React app. So this is like the the uh, the subject of the talk. And this is this is what uh, Dan Abramov first said when he uh, when he first became a part of Facebook, and he was like, uh, "Yeah, I was uh, he, he developing something in secret for a while, and then he he was getting excited because it was it was something what what it was able to do. It was able to give new developers, people that that don't have an idea about React." Give them an easy way in into the ecosystem without having to deal with all of this configuration, with uh, all of this stuff. So it abstracts away the configuration and the dependencies, and it, it makes it easier to get started. Um, so they describe it as create it with no build configuration. So no build configuration is an interesting, interesting thing because in the background they're actually still using all of the same tools. So they're still using Webpack Babel, they're still using ESLint, using all of these things. How are they getting away with it? So what, what they do, like if you look at the structure of the project, so over there on the left what you have is, this is the different packages that they, that they, they uh, expose. So these are, these are different um, NPM packages. So the, they have their Babel configuration, their ESLint configuration, and the React scripts. The React scripts, it contains a number of different dependencies. So these, these are the ones that are doing the different, the different uh, things that you all well know. So like the Webpack, for instance, or, or ESLint or, or Babel. And mostly, this, this you configure yourself. You install it, you npm install it, and it, it lands in your package JSON. And these are all the different, the different versions, and they get bumped regularly by, by Dan and all of the people at, at Facebook. And um, then they have a nice Webpack config, and what I really found interesting about this the first time that I saw it is how much of this is comments. So they they have really gone through and they have researched like this in a hundred times more detail than I would have ever done. And they they spend their time on this all the time. And um, it, the funny thing is is that there's not a whole lot of people actually at Facebook that are working on it. This this is maybe Dan and only just a little small slice of his time. Sometimes releases come out, it's just, just the community. And so this is this is great because what they do is the amount of effort that has gone into this is they they have uh, they have researched it to s such a level where they know of some bug X in Babel that that causes some issue with the Webpack configuration that should work this way right now, but because of the the Babel the way it is, you have to hack around it, and they do this for you. So this is this is really interesting kind of kind of thing. So what they offer is Babel configuration, ESLint configuration, Webpack configuration. So really, it's not, it's not that they don't offer configuration. They, it is configuration, create your ACT app. It's just that you don't need to make these decisions yourself. So Create React app, you can you can say has been making tools zero config. So they've been making these tools which are have a lot of configuration already. They've been making them into less of a decision for you. So Create React app has has had some success in various different companies. So I, I read recently that that BuzzFeed has been inspired by them to create a lower configuration. Um, so actually, I think they, they said it was a zero configuration kind of uh, de developer, developer environment at, um, at BuzzFeed. And it's also inspired us. So um, this, is, this is one of our projects. So we forked Create React App, React app and um, we made it, uh, what we wanted to do was add universal rendering to it. So server-side rendering and um, also some extra other things that we get for free. But I'll, I'll get into this later. Um, the, the question is, how do, how do we actually get here? So when I first, when I first looked at Create React App, I, I looked through the docs and I thought, yeah, yeah, this, this could be cool. And what really stuck on me is like I scrolled down to here and I'm, I'm reading this and like if you're a power user and I'm like yeah I'm a power user yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna do this I'm gonna eject 
And so a, what, it, what ejecting does is it basically turns it into a, a boilerplate generator. So, so all it does is it takes all of that configuration that was all nicely done by those, those public communi uh, uh, community um, contributors and Facebook and everything, and it brings it out into your project, which at the beginning, it, yeah, it feels great, and it looks great. So what are, the, what are the downsides of this? So the downside was that all, all my configuration was scoped to my project. So I had all these config files in my project again. So that means that if I create a new project, oh, I got to do this webpack config.js search again. I need to go find where that latest version of the latest configuration, which is the cool thing to do now, is. Um, and it's all your responsibility again. So this, this means that if, if they have written some, some hundred line webpack config and or thousand line with the number of comments that they have there, and, and they have researched this to the nth degree, do you, do you, you now take this over. Now this is your responsibility. Now you have, to, you have to do it to the same level that they do if you want to maintain this kind of, um, this kind of support. The third one is that up applying updates is a manual task. So that means that if they release something out there and you're like, yeah, this is great, then that means you have to go and you have to go find that in their project and you have to manually extract it. And so there's, there's really, there's, there's downsides to ejecting. So I looked a little bit further. I looked into the documentation a little bit. I got, I got a little bit more inspired by by the principles that they had. So this, this idea of like zero configuration. Why, why is this cool? Why is zero configuration cool? I mean, Dan Abramov says it's cool, so it must be cool, right? So um, I, I, I found this, this thing, and it's, it, it tells you about a different option. So there, it describes this different option where you fork it instead. So you, you fork create React app. So you, you have this thing that is a copy of it in another GitHub repo. And you can basically pull in the updates easier, in an easier way. And so it, it's, it's like, maybe, maybe this will work for us. And so we decided to, we decided to take this to, to allow us to do, the, um, to do the universal app that we wanted to do. So what we did is we, we took React script, so that thing with that whole bunch of long dependencies, so ESLint, Babel, whatever. And we, we added some more dependencies to it. So we added, we added a React server, which does this. Um, it does the universal rendering, and it does streaming as well. And so we integrated it into this system so that you can still scaffold out new stuff pretty easily. You can just say, create React app with this fork of it, and it will, it will make a new app for you. Um, and so where does, I, I, I've talked a lot about these, these kinds of things. So I've talked a lot about uh, zero configuration and, and uh, that you don't need to worry about everything anymore. So where does the actual low configuration come in? So low configuration is, is the idea that, um, that you don't have to, you may actually need an escape hatch. So in, in some projects, you may say, OK, we have this super awesome config. But now we need actually something specific here. So we want to, on our company profiles, we want to, to treat our JavaScript a little bit differently with this specific file. And of course, you want to eliminate this as much as possible. But sometimes it comes in. So this is how, this is how we're doing it right now. So we're, we are able to, through this React server RC file, we're able to specify some, some client config and some server config. They're also running Webpack on the server. And, and then you can, you can add some, you can inject some specific lines. So just this, just this one line, this, this line seven there is the, is the one that we've injected for the, for the profiles. And so this, this is a, this is a way that you still have a way out of this. If you, so you, you have all of your beautiful configuration, it's somewhere else and it's being, it's being maintained and that's great. And you may need some specific thing in your, in your app. So this is, the, this is the way to do the escape hatch. However, I would still recommend that you resist adding configuration as much as possible to your own tools. So if you're, if you're deciding that you, oh, you want to create an app, you want to create a, you create a, a tool that you're going to put, make it, make it open source and everything, 
try to resist the urge to add configuration. So this this urge that yeah, I wanna I wanna be a power user. I wanna be a I wanna be a real developer. Um, so I, I would say think about the defaults that you have. So make make opinionated defaults and and good default behavior to things. So things that people would expect. And if if it really comes down to yeah, you know people will probably need to configure this, then, then add it, but add, add few options to it. So resist adding the configuration as much and because it will reduce your effort. So you, if, you're, if you're a maintainer of a tool, it seems like, yeah, it's great, I'll add all the options. And then, but with time, it can really wear down, wear down on you. So if you, if you resist it, then it will pay off in the long run. And also the effort of the people in the team and also in the greater community will help a lot. So, is is this idea over engineered? So, like what what we had here, like you're you're doing something weird with the Webpack config there, like you're you're writing it with some some uh, some function that is probably like doing some imperative stuff in there, and like it just it feels a little bit like hmm, yeah, this could be better. So, it's it is complex, and so the the question was, is this over engineered? And the answer is. It can be if you are you have a small team. So if you have a team of like three people or something like this, and you're you're working very focused on on a, a small number of uh, projects, and if or if you have a, a low amount of configuration in in your project, um, so this is it, it's quite possible that you that you uh, that it may not work for you. So what I what I mean by that is it is not. Uh, a silver bullet. It's not for everybody, um, but it it may work. And just just try it out for yourself. Um, so that was pretty much it. The takeaways here are: con config can contribute to JavaScript fatigue. So there there's that you have this hundred hundred line Webpack config, and that you need to know what's going on in there. That you have a whole bunch of different dependencies, and you need to bump those dependencies across multiple different projects. This contributes to JavaScript fatigue. It contributes, com contributes to ma maintainer burnout. The people that are maintaining the tools that, that we don't pay any money for, that, that are just so, um, they're so big in our industry, that some, sometimes these people, they're also human, right? And the, it, it also contributes to the, the high mental load in, in your team. So the, if, if you have some configuration across a multiple number of projects, then this is multiplied by however many projects you have and however many configuration options you have. So the new, new config, zero configuration tooling can help. So things like uh, Prettier, things like Create React App, these things can help. They reduce the, the problem. And at the end, you may need an escape hatch. So you may, you may need a way out of this uh, low configuration um, option. So you may need some way to say, okay, for this particular project, yeah, I do like all of these defaults, but I'd like to change this one thing. So you may need that. Uh, and also to resist configuration, to, to resist adding that to your own tools. And that's pretty much it. We have plenty of time for questions, so feel free. Yeah, I see a few hands. Go for it. So you said uh, one issue when you eject is that you then have to manually put in any updates. If you haven't ejected, how do you have an existing Create React app keep up with any updates? So the, yeah, the the question was that. Um, so with ejecting, you have to apply manual updates, and if you don't eject. How do you update? Um, and so the, the answer is um, when, you, when you generate a, 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 an, a React app with create React app, what it does is it puts a dependency on a package that has all of these things, all of these special things that, um, that I showed you. So with, the, with those code slides there. So all you need to do is bump one version number 
and then you're up to date with the latest version. So instead of having to know, okay, I need this version of Babel, this version of Babel CLI, this version of Webpack, this version of Webpack Dev Server, and all of these other dependencies, you bump one version and then you're on the latest, greatest thing from, um, from Create React App. Where do you find which version it's up to, or is there a command to do that? Uh, well, it's just it's just an npm package. So just any any way that you would normally update npm packages. So you can either look on on the npm website, or you can just npm update it, or just what, whatever you normally do for npm packages. Do you think that, uh, or have you found a way to sort of avoid working React? Create, create React app. So the question is, have I found a way to avoid forking Create React app? Um, I haven't yet, but they are working on it. Uh, there's uh, an issue for it that is for a plugin system. So they're thinking of making some kind of plugin model, maybe kind of like Babel, um, where it, uh, where you can just add add functionality to it. Um, I don't know how far along this is, but I think this was sometime late last year that they that they opened this. Did you try to add the uh, load type check? What is it building into a uh, so the answer, uh, the, the question was, um, uh, did, did I try to add the flow typer or is it built in? Um, and yes, it is, uh, I think they have dependencies for it and I have built it into one project. Um, I haven't, I haven't built it into all projects that I have yet, but yeah, there's, uh, you, you just have to, uh, I can't remember exactly what the, it's in the readme anyway. So there's a, there's an, a section on flow. And you just add, um, I think you just need to add some flow config file or something like that. Um, just one thing uh, for the flow integration. Um, the, the problem is usually you want to like, centralize configuration in like, this React scripts thing, like in Slint or something. But for flow, this is not really possible because you have like so many edge cases. So what you usually have to do is you need to have flow config in your projects separate. So you cannot really centralize that right now. Okay, so the, the comment was that uh, Flow has a, has a certain type of uh, structure so that you can't actually uh, centralize this in one place. You'll still have to have a Flow configuration in your project. How do you decide when to do an escape patch? So the question was, how do you, how, how do you decide when you use the escape hatch? Um, when you expose an escape hatch. So how do, how do you decide when you expose an escape hatch? So uh, that's, that's a really good question. Because um, usually you can kind of work around it a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it's really all, that's a, that's a really fuzzy kind of line there. So it, based on, on the type of person you are, based on uh, your, your project, I think it's a little bit more of like a, a, a soft kind of question. Um, so yeah, it, it depends on, depends on uh, the project. But I, I would say probably when you, are, um, when you don't want to have the same dependencies in different places or you don't, you're doing something that is, that is very specific. So you're using a particular library that you know is uh, not going to be uh, applied somewhere else and you need to do something with Webpack for this library, something, something like that. Maybe you don't want to have something hacky in your Webpack config everywhere. Um, so maybe maybe something like that. Again? So if you have, so you use this low low configuration setup. Um, do you have one or like, like how many projects do you have that use the uh, like really zero configuration, and how many of your projects use some kind of modification? Um, so this is pretty early still, so I would say one and one. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry, the, the question was, how many projects do I have that use the low and how many projects that I have the zero? And yeah, one, one and one. It's pretty, it's pretty early days still. So I think you've been making two points. Like the one is that if you have something with complex configuration, then you provide some sort of like default configuration to simplify everything, which I think is a great idea. Um, second point, the resist mm -hmm. configuration in your own tools to reduce maintenance load or maintenance load. I'm not sure if that's really true. Maybe what do you think about it? If you have a lot of different specialized tools with 
little configuration options. That means that they can't really share any of the code and they can't really share any of the maintenance work. Because if I want to use your tool, but I want to use it a little bit differently, I would need some sort of configuration, but I can't, so I have to write my own tool. Which means we're two people working on two different tools, doing more or less the same thing, but a little bit different. So what do you think about that? Um, so the question was, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so the, the question was along the lines of um, to resist adding tools internally in your own, in your own uh, internal tools may not be uh, a, a, the correct option, may not be the best option because that prevents other teams or other people from using, uh, from reusing code. Is this no idea? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will answer that. Um, uh, yeah. So I think, yeah, like like I said, there's always this. This doesn't always apply to everything, and so uh, resistance doesn't mean that you're always going to never add anything. Um, so if there is really a use case that you say. Hey, I want. I have this thing that this other team would really like to use, but they just need to change this small thing. Then great. But if if it's like, yeah, I got a, a lot of configuration so that the other team can use it, then maybe maybe you want to think that they write their own thing. It's it's possible. Um, so it's 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 not really a, a hard and fast answer. It's really depending upon the project. So um, about the Ajax thing, since um, create React tab will always be a dependency of your project once you create um, the app with it. Like it's usually something you install globally and then you create the application. Um, are there any suggestions on how to, after you've rejected, on how to keep it up? up to date that could be implemented inside create react app itself so that could be a command for instance that could tell you hey your configuration is up to date because create react, create react app uh, in in the league has um, already published a different version so basically your um, your web configuration doesn't match anymore uh, are they is this viable or is it outside their philosophy? That's, that's a really good question. So the question was, um, is there uh, some kind of either command line tool or some kind of tooling around actually updating once you have this dependency? So um, the, the thing is you have, once you create React app, once you have scaffolded something with this, you have this dependency on React scripts. So this thing with all the different stuff in the, in the package JSON and then the webpack config that I showed you. And so how can you find out um, instead of like bumping, like, uh, like I said before, like going in and trying to find the NPM version, which is kind of like meh. And it's not great. Um, is there is there some kind of way to update this? And the, the answer is I don't know. I I haven't heard of it. I think it's a great idea. I think uh, Dan would be happy to hear about it. I think like uh, yeah maybe maybe we should make a pull request for this. And um, I think it could also be a bot. I think it could like uh, something kind of like along the lines of Greenkeeper. Um, I mean, Greenkeeper itself would do it, but then it, it would need additional tooling around it. I think I've heard that Greenkeeper is going to get a plugin system, so maybe like a plugin for Greenkeeper that would show you the difference between your configuration or something. Maybe. I don't know. Um, yeah, so maybe it's on the roadmap. I don't know. Uh, I would expect once you have the dependency and you keep it, uh, maybe. Uh, you can still keep bumping it. It's just that if you eject it, your scripts are going to be there, and not the the updated ones are not well, going to be used. The, the problem is that they might be uh, releasing a new version, but uh, that version is not ejected. So, like, yeah, you, you, your you, your local app is a rejected version of yeah. of that one. Yeah, that's my uh, that um, it's a, the result of a process. 
that uh, was triggered by you manually, like you ejected. So there is a script that copied all the files and moved yeah. around. So now you cannot just merge uh, master or upstream from there. You know, you should sort of get the new version. Eject that version yeah, and then yeah. try to merge it. <laughs> but, but that's what I, what yeah, I, what that's I would think um, that um, somehow you can know if you are not updated. Well, anymore. that's, yeah, there is a package, I think it's called update notify. Okay, this oh. is why I like our community because we like so many discussions. <laughs> just just go outside and discuss. <laughs> 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 Like 10 minutes break because otherwise we will be kicked out uh, without hearing the last talk and give it up for Carl. Okay. Okay.